everyone I just finished recording a video where I share with you guys why I was drying up the girls and what I was gonna do with the time that I had uh, freed up if I stopped milking the girls I share with you all my reasons and I think well I tried to share with you you know prioritizing and a lot of things that maybe are not mentioned enough so if you want to check out that video please check the links down below now I wanted to share this in another time but I guess this is when it happened so this is when I'm gonna share it and it's about uh, mocha now I have my notes here because this has to do with pregnancies and deal and dates and heat cycles so I have my notes here because I keep notes on the girls just to make sure that I am not missing any signs of heat or any signs really that they're not doing that good now Mocha um, she went into heat like a couple of days after having her babies she had her babies um, August the 2nd and since then she had the twins since then um, she was fine the next day and then I would say the same uh, two days 48 hours after having the girls she went into heat and we didn't have anything ready for the boys so we had to separate them um, because the, the fence was not completely done we had a tree that fell and there was a bunch of things going on that were making the process of switching the boys to their pen almost impossible so anyways we separated nothing happened the next week comes and I was kind of watching her making sure she was okay next week comes she goes into heat again and I noticed because they were kind of sharing not sharing a fence you know there's another fence in between that we put in just in case because we didn't want any accidental breeding and she did fine um, I researched that and sometimes you know well First of all, I called Arisha at Hans and Neverdone Farms because I got her, I got mocha from her and I thought, I just, is this even possible? Can she go into heat a couple of days after having her babies? And she said, absolutely. Kalani went into heat 24 hours after she had her babies. I mean, it's, it's a possibility. So anyway, <laughs> so anyways, um, I researched can she go into heat twice a month and yeah it was possible <laughs> it, it happened I can tell you it happened to Mocha and overall she you know she was ready to breed again so again we kept all the boys and the girls separate and um, then I was kind of watching for signs of heat I didn't want any of the boys to come into the girls or to jump on top of something I have a very kind of high planter situation that I knew that they could use to jump over the fence so stuff like that that I really was trying to watch for so I by September 20th Clara went into heat and I put her with Rocky. Rocky at that time was ready to breathe, to breed. I mean, he spent from April, mid-April until September and he wasn't ready to breed. Like Clara would go into heat and stuff, but he wouldn't even try. He wouldn't, I don't know, he wasn't just ready to breed. And in September, I've noticed that she, yeah, he was ready and she was ready so they were together for a couple of days and that was that she was bred then uh, what, what was it let me see then on October the 3rd Mocha um, was normal I didn't see anything or it was the second sometime around the beginning of October um, the, one of the boys, I don't know, messed up the gate and was outside, but it was only Rocky who was outside and I mean, we were locking him in his barn and little Taz would walk 
on top of the one piece of wood inside that barn i mean it was crazy but there, it was this one time that he was outside apparently and when i asked somebody to do chores one of the kids did did it for me and apparently he was somewhat exposed to mocha that day of course i didn't know mocha was in heat um then but the next day, so this, let's say, happened October 2nd, the next day, then I see that Mocha is in heat and she's flagging her tail and she's going crazy. You know, it's again, it's happening. Well, thank goodness that nothing happened before when they were sharing that little part of the fans. I was kind of excited that she was in heat. And so I was like, well, right. But I didn't know that Rocky was outside his area and with access to the fans the day before. So it comes October the 24th, which was a Sunday, and my husband was working on the shelter for the boys. Now, at this point, mind you, they've been there for a while, okay? So, you know, after Clara was spread and everything like that, they moved out there. So it wasn't that you know this was still building no they had a house we were just fixing it and we were adding things and my husband was trying to reinforce the fencing to make it a little bit taller and so all that was happening in mocha was loud so my husband was like well i think mocha's in heat the next day we are sitting there and i'm like i think mocha's in heat because she's been extremely loud well, come to find out when I go to check on her later on the evening that she was stuck. Uh, she was stuck in a couple of, um, like, she got her head stuck in a way that she couldn't get her head out. So she could sit, she could do all the things, but she was being loud because she was stuck. So lesson learned. Uh, you know, every time I hear her, she's not loud, but if she's being loud, I always come and check on her because... You know something could be wrong but i assumed that day that she was in heat when she wasn't in heat apparently uh, allegedly i don't even know how to say it because at this point it's all speculation it seems like i'm a lawyer and i'm in court um so that was october 24th and 25th so she should have come back into heat somewhere if she was in heat on the 24th or the 25th of October, she should have been back into heat either the 12th, 13th, 14th or 15th of November. Today is the 16th and she is not in heat. So, there, there are a couple of possibilities. Maybe I'm missing it. Maybe she's being quiet now. She's not as aggressive with the bucks because they're not so close as they used to be. And before it was easier. They can still see each other. They can still scream at each other. So I don't know if that's a reason or not. But it could be that I missed it. Although I don't think so. I have all the dates on my phone. And I even have a reminder that says, you know, on the day that they're supposed to, day 18, then it's Claire in heat, it's Mocha in heat, it's Annabelle in heat. And then I go to day number 21 and my phone's been going off and nothing is happening. I mean, she is not coming back into heat. So that's part of the reason why I also wanted to stop milking her. Um, I call my vet's office. I talk to uh, the assistant and, um, you know, I was kind of worried because she just had her babies in August and now she's, you know, after I learned that she was possi possibly exposed to the bug through one fence, I'm thinking maybe something happened because I am telling you since April, uh, Rocky was born in February and I brought him uh, mid-April around the 20th of April and he wasn't ready to breed and I could see Clara she was in heat she wanted attention from the boy and everything but he was not doing anything and now all of a sudden he is interested now in September that's when I noticed that he started being aggressive and he started looking for the girls so I'm assuming that maybe he was aggressive enough to go and breed through the fence 
So I called my vet and my vet said, well, let me tell you, um, it's not a great situation, but guess what? Goats are not separated from males in the wild. So if we are talking about the anatomy and, you know, the capabilities of a goat having babies so close, you know, uh, I would say six months between having birth, uh, giving birth, then she's able to do it. And um, she just made an appointment. So I, you know, she can be checked out. And she said that, you know, we just need to do an ultrasound. Um, there's also a possibility to do a blood test, but I'm thinking I'm going to do ultrasound for her and for Clara just to confirm that Clara is pregnant. We might be able to tell how many babies she has and everything, but I just want to make sure that everything is fine with Mocha. Now, the vet said, you're just worrying too much. She'll be fine. Um, if she, you know, I kind of share with her my experience with her giving birth, you know, the age that she is. And when she looked at her, she said, you know, before she's more than ready to have a baby. She's wide enough. She is, she has everything that she needs to have a good birth. So anyways, that's what we did. We talked about that and she said that, you know, we just need to do an ultrasound to make sure that she is pregnant and that closer to delivering um, if she in fact was bred October 3rd and then she'll be two weeks three weeks after Clara which would put her around March the first week of March now I was feeling terrible let me be honest with you, I was feeling terrible because I thought to myself, oh my gosh, the one thing I have to do is keep them separate. They are separate. And because of this stupid one-time thing, this is what happened. And so I was feeling terribly guilty about it. And then I was talking to somebody in a goat group and they were like, oh no, just don't feel bad. It happens. It happens to everyone at least once, um, and especially when you're starting with goats and you don't know how crazy they can get. And, um, you know, when you get help from somebody doing chores and stuff like that, all of those things, you know, are out of your control. And once you're settled, once you have everything done, when you have all your systems set up and, you know, now that they're separated and now that, you know, there's no need for them to move between pens, you're going to be fine. It's it's not going to happen. And I even talked to the vet and I asked about, you know, stopping the pregnancy. And she said that because if it did happen October the 3rd, which is why we're going to do the ultrasound, if it did happen in October the 3rd, um, there's a way we can stop it. But it's not something that she recommend. Let me put it that way. She explained the process, she explained everything, and she said, I think it'd be safer to let her have her babies if, in fact, she's pregnant. She said there's also a possibility that she has something in her, you know, that, I don't know, she, she, she explained there's something else that could have happened, and that's why she's not coming into heat, and not necessarily she's pregnant. But when I learned what happened on October 2nd, and then seeing her in heat on October 3rd, Honestly, I think it's more that she's pregnant than anything else. But what do I know? I'm just going to wait. I'm going to take her to the vet, have her uh, ultrasound confirm if she's pregnant or not, and go from there. Now, with Gaia and her abscess and my back and forth with the bed, all the possible diagnoses that I saw online, to be honest with you, um, the, when I realized that this was happening and I was not seeing her coming back into heat. I was almost in tears and freaking out because I thought, well, is there anything else that could happen? You know, and I shouldn't have said that because there's always something else that's going to happen. But um, it's, I don't know. 
I guess it's a learning curve, it's something that I had to go through and if she's not pregnant then we'd have to do um, another test. She said probably a blood test and something else just to make sure that she's okay and you know maybe I'm just missing the heat cycle uh, or you know just making sure she's healthy and she's okay. Now she's fine. She eats like a champion. She doesn't have you know her FAMACHA score looks wonderful. She doesn't have worms or parasites or a heavy load anyways she is not iron deficient um, she is due for her copper and stuff but everyone else is so. anyways it's just one of those things that you know makes me worry but at the same time you know I am kind of comforted by the idea that my vet says well if it happened, it happened. Uh, she's old enough to have her babies. This would be her second time. So it's not going to be... It, it doesn't have to be harder than the first time. Let me put it that way. And, um, you know, it happened. So now we have to deal with it. I am 100% uh, sure that if she did get pregnant, she was... She, you know, it happened on October the second I guess or the third I'm not even sure but even like that I'd have a delivery date which I'll put on the screen because I really I didn't want to think about the idea of her being pregnant not because it bothers me it doesn't bother me I think it's going to be awesome because I'm gonna have milk throughout the summer uh, and it's going to be Clara who produces a lot of milk and it's also going to be Mocha who produces a lot of milk. Anyways, I've learned to be careful with my words because when I say something it's not going to happen, it ends up happening. But I guess that's all I have to say. I am going to wait for our date. Um, my vet didn't have anything immediately. So I set up um, an appointment. I'm going to take her on that date. But they're going to call me if there's anything available before then. I wanted her to come to the farm and do the ultrasound here. But I, it's just way too expensive to do that. Um, maybe if I had you know all the goats that needed to be seen or scanned or anything like that maybe for the the, the next breeding season which would be uh, in the fall of 2022 maybe then if I had the girls you know the little girls twins pregnant and the other three which I'm planning to breed all together I think I'm gonna try to stay away from summer babies um, I mentioned that in another video uh, summer babies if they're boys they'll be you know old enough to breed by when the rut season hits and that's what happened to Taz and I had to separate him way too early because he was in a rut I mean he was a baby and he was in a rut and he was acting like a bug and I had to separate him so I don't think I'm planning for summer babies um, at least not for the time being so maybe next time when I breed all the girls I'll pay for the vet to come here but I think that for this time, I'm just going to take both of the girls. I'm going to put them in a kennel and I'm going to take them there. They're super well behaved. So I hope that they're going to behave well at the vet. And we can see what's going on with Mocha. If she's pregnant and count babies uh, from Clara. Or figure out if there's something wrong with Mocha. So that was a long long story so i hope that you're still with me let me know in the comments if you still are here at the end of this video thank you so much for joining me and i'll talk to you guys next time bye guys